the old uh, Taoist sage, and uh, later this was collaborated by a uh, uh, Brahmin from India, a Hindu Brahmin, said they wouldn't lift a finger to save the whole world. Well, this video is for people who will lift their finger to save the whole world. You'll see what I mean. So, first, uh, good news. I found out that the children's energy park, energy production parks, have already been built in Africa and Southeast Asia. Uh, but the kids have been taught that they were like just supplying uh, uh, energy uh, lights and, and pumps for water uh, with their energy. They didn't know they were doing a driver's training for the new fuelless technology. But now they know. Okay. So here's our dome of our column. And here's our finger. Now you remember when you were a kid and you did the whirl a jig or the tilt the whirl or the merry-go-round and push the kids around? You threw your whole body into it right? Here I can even use my little finger to turn and generate energy for Peter Lorre fans if you remember his famous quote from one of his heavy movies. So the thing is that you know, the present technologies are both inflexible technologies. This is a flexible technology. Fuel, all fuel systems have explosions inside a steel chamber. That's what they always have. It's inflexible. So they waste 30 to 50 percent of their urban travel energy just getting, overcoming the initial inertia of the vehicle. Same thing with batteries. You know, they've got metal inside, some kind of metal inside a plastic container. And they keep giving current that they've stored, right, out of the chemical changes and so on and so forth. Right? But in this case, we don't need to sip in the 50% or 30%, you know, or the kid in the playground either, but he's using his whole body and we're just using our finger, right? Okay, why are we using our, just our finger? Here we have 13 stacked three-phase generators, each with six magnets, three North Pole and three South Pole, generating through nine coils, you know, uh, alternating current. At the base, we have two four-inch ring magnets with the same pole facing each other. And they give an amazing lift. When you put a little weight on them, they sink quite a bit. As you put more and more weight in them, they sink less and less. So you can use them for springs too in, in your, your, your in shock absorbers. So, uh, so you have a non-magnetic bearing around the narrowed axle where I gave two and a half, three inches uh, uh, narrowing here so that it can go up and down as more weight or less weight is added and stabilize it so it doesn't slip out of place or go against the magnets on the side or something like that, right? And above it, we have our Mueller motor. In this case, you know, I found that uh, what turns off the uh, Hall effect sensors in the middle of the paramagnetic cores of the drivers is uh, having it lower. That means that when it's turned on, it gives more of a kick to the, uh, to the south pole. It turns on with South Pole, off with North Pole. So the North Poles are lower. But if you get too low, it doesn't turn off long enough, and it starts to slow down. So in this case, I found that uh, a quarter to three-eighths of an inch is okay, but a half inch or more is no good. Okay, so here we come to one of the most interesting parts. This is a generator shift, the shoe of a generator shift. And the shoe is high on this side, neutral, disengaging, and low on this side where it engages in first gear. And I have a way to turn it down 
to first gear. Then, to speed it up, as it speeds up, you go to second gear, third gear, and as the wind takes over, the air pressure on the dome on top, you take it out of gear again. So these, these are the feet, <laughs> and the feet even have uh, insoles, like a, an arch support. But these kind of feet aren't like human feet or even alien or robot feet. These feet only move inside the shoe. <laughs> and most feet move around the world in the shoe, but these only move back and forth in the shoe itself and peek out a little bit at the front. So that's... Uh, that's the arrangement. It weighs over 50 pounds, all of the magnets, but uh, they weigh, weigh zero So yeah, because of the magnetic lift. So we have internalized uh, vehicle uh, levitation. I don't like to use the word gravitation because the word gravitation is a false word, you know. Uh, all reality is actually field relations. That isn't a description of reality, that is reality. What they call science, the science of writing little formulas in books and doing little tests and whatnot, is the old science, right? A material science that clung to material. There is no matter. There is no gravity. There is no mass. There, uh, when they talk about the laws of science, <laughs> they're talking about some field relations of some complicated minor suborder, you know. And it's a bogus attempt to start another religion, the science, the religion of science, you know. And it's a bogus because it, there is no religious of science. We, we all live in reality. Everything is in reality that isn't in reality. So, and the reality is we're surrounded by many, 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 many energy fields. And we are composed of many, many, many energy fields, and they all have their energy field relations. So, if you're talking about this is so radical, this is not so radical. You know, I'm sure many alien cultures of many planets have uh, used this for eons. Okay, we're going to do a demo. So, with the finger, I start it. And I shift down to first gear, and you can see it's going. They're at about 17 volts, it's drawing, at about uh, 0.35 amps. And now we're going faster on the road, and this is about 20 miles per hour. And you can see it's going about 2,000. Cut! All right, so for a critique of this, you could lighten the dome, but this is about the right proportions, like maybe a pound, it weighs two, a pound or two because it's the widest diameter, so it has the most moment of inertia, you know, per weight. Um, you might reverse the shoes so that they're coming down in favor of the right movement instead of against it, you know. Um, you can pull these in. These are from three years ago, my original mag amp gen series, and uh, eliminate the metal so that they are, that 50 pounds of those 13 generators is uh, less of a moment of inertia. And uh, some mechanism for doing the shift of a mechanical lever system inside or so on. And you may ask, with trillions of electronic gadgets aiding mechanical gadgets in every appliance and motor and so on and so forth, and fuel motor, why have a mechanical thing adjusting uh, an electronic thing? Well, the reason is you have no, no energy to waste. 
You need all the energy. You don't sap it off in uh, power windows and power steering and power this and power that. All bells and whistles, you know. It makes the car go, you know. You get the groceries, get the stuff that makes you live, not the elective necessities, the basic necessities. And makes you feel good about yourself because you're not destroying the world. Now, as far as destroying the world goes, we know oil is destroying the world. We know that oceans and we know nukes are destroying the world. We know mutants are showing up from the meltdown in Japan on the west coast of the U.S. and uh, the radiation in the atmosphere. We know the fish are all mutated with two heads and we're not in Florida and Louisiana and uh, the Caribbean. But there's always uh, new fuel lobbies. The new fuel is going to get rid of the oil fuel and, you know, and give you cheaper and better and blah, blah, blah. So we know that scam of uh, using your corn for uh, ethanol of 12 or 15 years ago. And now there's a new one, gas, natural gas. Oh, yeah, not as much pollution. Oh, yeah, this and that. And, oh, yeah, we could poison the water supply by... Uh, again, selling this government secretly on this to repay their debts to the IMF. So they'll all buy bottled water from us, the multinationals, and we'll have absolute control of every living being on earth. They all got to buy water, so they all got to make money and all work for it. <laughs> us and so on. And we can put anything in the water we want any time. When it's time to get rid of them, we just put poison in the water and we get rid of them like a bunch of uh, rats. We don't have to call them rats. All of a sudden, suddenly, you know, an outbreak happens here and there and the other thing, like it's happening now. 